Lots of people are becoming interested in home canning and people who have never canned before. So today I'm going to be sharing with you tip number two for home canners. My name is Kathy Love with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. And tip number two is to be sure that you're using the proper equipment. This is extremely important in home canning and you don't want to cut corners. First of all, if you're just planning to do water bath canning, which can be for canned tomatoes, canned fruits, jams and jellies, and pickles, you're going to need a water bath canner. It's basically just a big kettle, it has to have a lid, and it needs to have a rack that fits inside to keep your jars off the bottom of the canner. This is a fairly simple piece of equipment. Um, but you definitely are gonna need it for water bath canning. They come in different sizes. This is about a medium size. So get a size that's going to fit your needs. Now, if you are going to be pressure canning, in other words, if you are going to be canning low acid foods like vegetables or meats, you have to have a pressure canner. This is not the same as a pressure multi cooker like an Instapot. Uh, Instapots have not been tested for canning, even though some of them come with canning directions. So we cannot recommend that you can in an Instapot. Um, pressure canners come like this with dial gauges, or they also come where they only have weights, or they come with a combination. But if you have a pressure canner with a dial gauge, these gauges should be tested every year for accuracy. Uh, the Cooperative Extension Service does this for free. All you need to do is bring this by our office and leave, leave it with us and we'll test it. And we also will check your seals and your handles to make sure that, and your gaskets to make sure everything is in good condition for canning. And if you have an older canner, and you're not sure if the entire canner is safe to can in, you can bring the whole thing in. We just ask that it be clean before you bring it. We'll take a look at it and give you recommendations on what might need to be done to get it into canning condition and whether it can be gotten into canning condition. The next most important thing is to always use mason jars. Mason jars are, are tempered for heat and pressure, and um, they are not like the decorative jars that look like mason jars. So be sure you're using mason jars. You can see they come in lots of different sizes and shapes, um, but you need to be sure they're tested for canning. And also use the standard two-piece rings and flats and we recommend that you purchase new flats every year. You can reuse your rings as long as they are not rusty. And one other piece of equipment that you're going to need is a jar lifter. So um, it's really important to be able to have something to lift things in and out of your canner easily that where you won't burn your hands. So jar lifter is really a necessity. So before you get canning, be sure that you have collected all of the proper equipment, that it has um, been tested for accuracy, and that it is in good condition for you to start canning. If you have any questions about your equipment, how to get started, or questions about canning in general, be sure and give us a call.